Continuing the tradition of reviewing both the best and worst examples of Star Trek The Next Generation, we move on to Episode 3 of the first season, Code of Honor. At first glance, this doesn't seem to be that bad of an episode. In fact, it's a fairly typical example of Star Trek. A technologically and culturally advanced crew of the Starship Enterprise comes in contact with a more primitive and savage... Oh, shit. There it is. Maybe this is a bad idea. The conflict of the episode is based around the idea that there is a plague on a Federation planet that, despite all the advanced technology and science of the Federation, is unable to do anything about. Fortunately, there is a cure in the form of a vaccine that the Ligonians possess. Now, the Ligonians are a more primitive society that does not possess warp travel, although they do seem to be aware that it exists, despite the Prime Directive in later episodes establishing that it is illegal for the Federation to have any contact with them until they establish warp flight. The leader of the Ligonians, Luten, is immediately taken with Tasha Yar when she judo throws one of his subordinates. Would it be possible for Lieutenant Yar to do so, Captain? Some demonstration of defense training? Tasha demonstrates to them some terrible-looking judo on the holodeck. Then Luten kidnaps Tasha. The counter bridge, red alert. The Enterprise fires a number of warning shots at the planet. This has no effect. Dr. Crusher comes to the bridge and informs Captain Picard that she is unable to replicate the vaccine. If they're going to use it to cure the plague, they're going to have to deal with the Ligonians. We were testing if you can replicate the vaccine. And we can't. At Dr. Crusher's insistence, Wesley is invited onto the bridge by the captain, and he takes the ops station. Sit at ops next to Lieutenant LaForge. Sir? Sir? Is the whole ship deaf? Data, having gone through the cultural records of the civilization, has discovered the reason why Tasha was kidnapped. For Lutan, it was nothing more than a matter of pride. In the face of taking on a more powerful opponent, he needed to make himself seem heroic, so he kidnapped a security officer who he believed to be the most dangerous target. Card beams down to the planet where he's met with a rather courteous welcome. Since that what had occurred was nothing more than traditional Ligonian cultural practice, all Captain Picard actually had to do was go down to the planet and ask for her return. I am here in peace to ask for the return of Lieutenant Yar. But Lieutenant has changed his mind in the meantime. He has decided that he cannot allow Tasha Yar to leave because he decides he wants to marry her. I find that I cannot part with her. <laughs> Lieutenant's first wife, Yorina, is offended by this and decides to challenge Tasha to a fight to the death. I challenge your right of supersedence! I see you two understand the proper value of women. We understand that they are highly pleasant things, but after all, unimportant, except for the land they own. Later, when discussing with Lutan the upcoming duel, Picard learns that Lutan's power, prestige, and honor is built upon his wife's land holdings. We understand that they are highly pleasant things, but after all, unimportant, except for the land they own. There is a running joke through this episode of Data trying to learn the concept of humor and jokes, but it's not very good. <laughs> Including the Kittleys. Now, see, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the fight. The blades are poisoned, the weapons are dangerous. It's time for the fight. The weapons are poisoned, and the fight looks... really stupid. Oh, God. Tasha wins the fight because there was no way in hell she was going to die during the first season, and she immediately beams the two of them up for Dr. Crusher to save Yorina's life. Dr. Crusher manages to save Yorina, and due to some bizarre loophole with the laws of this civilization, that means Yorina is granted a divorce of some sorts from Lutan. Yorina, no. Even as I battled, Pagan, I heard you calling out for me. Yorina, now in charge of her own life and decisions, chooses Hagon, the former subordinate of Lutan, as her first. Yorina chooses Lutan as her second, and everything's back to normal, I guess. As you see, Captain, 
You may excel in technology, but not in civilized behavior. What the hell is that even supposed to mean? So what's wrong with this episode? Oh my god, where do I even start with what's wrong with this episode? I mean, for one thing, it's kind of a contrived setup where, oh, there's a plague infesting some other planet and that we have to get a vaccine for it. Like, a vaccine's actually going to stop that. It'll prevent people from getting the disease, but won't cure the people who already have it. Aside from that fact, they have this weird idea. I don't know who the hell's idea was to go and say, oh, let's have this primitive backward society with this sort of framing of an African culture and have it played by a bunch of black people. Holy shit, what were you thinking there? I mean, somebody actually stand up in the sort of writer's pitch meeting and say, Hey, I got an idea. Let's go and do it like this. All joking aside, let's give the writers and directors and the creators of this show the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Back in the early days, especially in the original series and the very early days of The Next Generation, there was not an enormous amount of effort put in to make the alien species that differentiated from the humans. You couldn't have heavy makeup effects like the Ferengi, you didn't have CG that could really work for that kind of thing at its time, and you couldn't go and sort of Vulcan everybody up like that because there's only so many different variations of the almost human species that you can do. So a lot of them ended up just being human. You saw that in the first episode of this season. You saw this in the second episode of the season. Q looks human. Everybody looks human. So you gotta do something to give the aliens a sort of singular defining feature. In this case, it was black people. I also know that this was the 80s when this episode were made. And it's a bit of a troubling prospect to go and kind of judge things that occurred in the past by the modern perspective of morality. But unfortunately, I still think that even in the 80s, they probably should have known better. Beyond that troubling aspect, the episode's just boring. I mean, the framing device of the disease infecting another planet doesn't have much of an on-screen representation in this episode. It's all about a vaccine you don't really see. You don't see the sickness, you don't see the cure, you don't see any of that. On top of that, the fight scenes are rather stupid looking, and the subplot of Data trying to tell a good joke just isn't funny. It's unfortunately something that happens over and over again with Data, where he just doesn't get humor. And they tried to base an entire subplot of this one episode around Data not getting jokes and not being able to make jokes, as opposed to just having little bits interspersed throughout an episode like they do with the rest of the series. Only because I refuse to give any episodes a score of zero, one out of five. How sad for you. You've lost everything. I have my honor.